Hello, my name is Glenn Mulligan with Flux Pumps, and today we're going to take a look at comparing our new Visco Power high viscosity pump to that of the Lutz design. These are going to be 3A pumps, so they're certified for use in the uh, dairy industry, also very much suitable for uh, food, beverage, uh, cosmetics, pharmaceutical. Um, also, these pumps are available in a hygienic uh, FDA and food version, uh, as well as an industrial version. But today we'll be looking at the sanitary designs, uh, and what we're going to do is just look at some of the differences between the Visco power unit and the Lutz uh, B70V pump. Here you can see with the Lutz pump, this is a 39 inch unit. Uh, this is their SR, speed reduced gear drive version. And uh, at first glance here, we can see um, tri-clamp assembly for ease of uh, disassembly and maintenance, and a two inch tri-clamp port, uh, but also taking some note here that the connection is a bit neck down here at the pump tube, only about a true inch and a half but still a two inch tri-clamp connection. Also on the Lutz design, this is a one piece outer tube. So when we take a look here at the Visco power, you'll see we have a removable stator housing uh, that does give us some benefits. But as we do see here again, this is a one piece pump tube, which is developed by Lutz. Looking at the Visco power version, you can see here two piece tube, uh, highly electro polished, better than that of the Lutz design. And here we can see the removable stator housing, which is at the bottom. So reverse thread. Uh, this is going to allow this to come off and be easier uh, for disassembly. No snap rings at the bottom uh, and also assist in uh, cleaning and keep any replacement if necessary to a minimum, right? You would just have to replace the stator housing, not the entire pump tube. Up on top, we have two tri clamps holding our unit together. So no need for any special tools here. Again, a two inch tri-clamp port, which you can see that this is actually a true two inch all the way right down to where the discharge port meets the pump tube. So no added uh, back pressure or any friction loss or anything like that coming out of the Visco power design. Okay, so what we're looking at here now is we've removed the internals from the pump tube itself so we can take a look at some more of the components. Uh, as we see here down on the bottom side, right, we refer to the fact that this is a single piece tube. So Showing here, all right. Bit of a thinner tab down here on the bottom, so if these are inadvertently dropped into drums, tanks, anything, these could be um, potentially damaged, and then you would have to replace the whole tube. So that's one benefit to a removable stator housing. Here we have the Teflon stator. Uh, they also have this available in other materials, which we'll review later on in the video. And then we can see down here, the rotor and shaft is one piece design. Uh, this is a requirement from 3A. The Visco power is also gonna be a one piece design uh, and that just eliminates any dead spot which may have occurred in between uh, where the shaft uh, mounts to the rotor as well as where the shaft would have mounted to the drive side. Lastly down here, you'll see these items as a spacer ring and a retaining ring. After the Teflon stator is inserted into the pump tube, These items would then be placed right, into this end here. The whole assembly would be pushed in, and then this eventually would be kept into the pump tube by use of this retaining ring. So just some things to note there, right? If this retaining ring is not installed properly, it could easily fall out of the bottom of the pump as it's dropped in. Uh, this item could be forgot. Uh, in fact, as we were taking it apart, it kind of dropped out of the bottom of the pump unsuspectingly. Uh, and lastly, right, if you do forget to put these items in, what happens, especially in a high pressure situation, um, as the pump is pumping and developing pressure, it'll start to work the stator out the bottom. Uh, but also what could happen in a low pressure scenario, the way that the pump is rotating, the stator would actually stay in the pump tube and you would not even realize that you lost these pieces in your container until you went to disassemble the pump. Take a look a little bit further up here on the drive end where the mechanical seal is. You see the spring is exposed, so this is a sanitary seal, but we would consider this to be an open mechanical seal. And in addition to that, in this hole right here, this is where you would be able to set uh, what they're calling a retaining clip uh, or sleeve or ring. Uh, it's actually a bit of a Teflon O-ring in there. And what that does is actually keep a pin in the shaft, which is keeping the shaft affixed to the drive side of the pump. So that's just one thing, uh, actually, interesting enough in the manual, that can come loose during shipping. So even right out of the box, before you install the unit, you would want to check to make sure 
that that is in fact installed correctly and still holding that pin in. Uh, also, right, that pin uh, is a certain part number. If you get to the FDA version where this is two pieces, these two pins are two different part numbers, meaning that they're different pins. So just something you would need to keep uh, mind of as you're reassembling the pump. Okay, now we'll take a look at the Flux Visco power, broken down in somewhat of the same fashion as we just looked at the Lutz design. So here you can see the outer pump tube. Again, as we saw before, this is a two-piece tube, so the stator housing is going to be able to be disconnected. Uh, this is a reverse thread. That way, while the pump is running, uh, nothing can become unfastened. Benefit here, right, sometimes uh, these can fall off shop benches. Uh, these can be damaged, right, uh, in, in um, certain applications that you may be using, right? Who knows what could happen. Here with the Visco Power, this is sold as an individual component where again, we looked at the Lutz tube, it is all one piece, so you would have to replace that entire pump tube. Here we see the Teflon stator, and then we'll move to the rotor and shaft design. Also a one piece, again, this is the 3A design, so that's required. On the food design, this is gonna be threaded into both sides of the pump, and there would be an O-ring, so a little bit of difference there. But also what we can see here up on the mechanical seal of the Visco Power, is that this is a closed mechanical seal, so a much cleaner design, more of a cartridge seal style. Uh, if you look at our assembly video for this unit, you'll see that this simply slides on, it stays with an O-ring, and you're able to thread this right down into the drive side. So it just gives you much easier uh, maintenance, assembly and disassembly, as well as cleaning if you're in any of those applications that do require sanitizing of the pump after each run. Looking a little bit closer, so where the pin was on the Lutz design, uh, again, we do not have any pins, uh, just that of the threaded shaft, but there is one area where you would put what we consider a staking tool, but um, an Allen wrench, screwdriver, anything like that that fits in the hole would be in there, and that's just so you can grab on and be able to disconnect the shaft from the drive side of the pump. Okay, so now we'll take a look at the individual components of the mechanical seal, which goes on the Lutz B70V pump. As you can see right off the bat, there's many more components to this seal, right? Uh, three O-rings, the two seal faces, a spring, uh, as well as the seal housing, and then that pin, which needs to be installed to keep this entire assembly together. So as you can see, small O-ring goes down on a shoulder here. This will seal between the shaft and the drive shaft here. We have the spring, which is going to keep pressure on our rotating face. Once we get that set, we'll come over to the seal housing. There's an O-ring to be installed. And then the stationary face to be pressed in, like so. And then this last O-ring, which would come around the seal housing itself. This will then mate here, and then we'll have to pick this up, which as you can see, right, very small coupling, tough to manage this way, could also go on its side, still again, a little bit tough to deal with, but what'll happen here, drive shaft comes in, we then need to come in and look for this area where we can insert the pin. So as you can see, definitely a bit more tough than what you're dealing with on the Visco power unit. After a few tries, we did get it down in there. Uh, but if you really need to see how it all goes together, <laughs> please take a look at the Lutz website. Uh, if you're tired of playing around with the Lutz design you have, uh, give us a call. As you can see, our design's a little bit better. Now what we're gonna take a look at further in depth is gonna be the closed mechanical seal configuration on the Flux Visco power unit. As you can see here, there's minimal components, and this is all inclusive of everything, the spring, O-ring, stationary, as well as rotating face. We see the drive side of the shaft up here it has two flats for putting a wrench on for your maintenance. And here we see that nice large threaded connection that we have, which goes into the drive shaft, right? Not the pins like we saw with the Lutz design. So to build this up quite quickly, stationary face gets put into the motor connection piece, seal housing. This would then be placed on top of the drive shaft. We'll affix one clamp band around. And then as we take the rotating face, there's a notch that we can see here. We take this pin, which is on top of this seal. This will slide right on. That O-ring keeping it in place, which then allows you to come right up on top and thread this down onto the drive shaft. 
Very simple, as this threads all the way down, we put the staking tool inside to hold this piece and the seal will be set due to the wave spring being inside. So as you thread it all down, tolerance and everything is set and the seal would be ready to go. Okay, so now we'll take a look at the mechanical seals themselves, right? Just the components here on the table so you get a better idea of what we're looking at. We have the Lutz version here on the left side of your screen and we have the Flux version here on the right side of your screen. Looking at the Lutz one, right? Here's the O-ring again for where the drive shaft meets the pump shaft. We have their spring, rotating face, stationary face, O-ring which seals the stationary face into this seal housing seal housing itself, and then this one larger O-ring which would go on the outside of the seal housing, eventually creating a seal with the outer tube for the pump. This is the way their seal comes. It will always come in components. With the flux seal, I've broken it down a bit further than anybody would receive a seal if they bought a replacement, right? So you see here, total of five components. We have the O-ring and the wave spring. Now typically, when you receive these, these would already be installed inside of this seal, right? So technically, what you would get when it shows up is just these two components. If we look at the same on the LUT side, removing the seal housings, right, still many more components. Then looking, right, stationary, or the rotating face, I'm sorry, here with the actual seal housing. And then this is going to be the stationary face, which gets pushed right into the motor connection piece here. A couple differences. LUT seal is rated for 10 bar, so about 147 PSI, and that's if you wanted to use their 25.1. This gives a bit lower volume. Uh, if we're comparing both side by side uh, for the pumps for the 50.1, which would be the B70 from LUTs, the seal is only rated to 8 bar, which is 116 PSI. That's actually what our old design was rated to. Here, the closed mechanical seal, which goes on the Visco power, is good up to 15 bar, which is right around 217 PSI, so much higher pressure capability with the Visco power design. Okay, taking one step further, we'll take a look at the actual pump shafts, right? These are going to be one piece attached to the rotor due to the 3A design. But we'll, take focused, uh, we'll focus our look up here at the top where it connects to the drive side of the pump. Here you see on the Lutz drive shaft that pin and the hole, which we discussed before, after this gets pressed in with the seal assembly. This is the pin that has to drop in to keep all of that assembled. One other thing to note here is also going to be the uh, shaft diameter. On the Lutz version, we're looking at an 8 millimeter shaft. And then if we compare that directly here to the Visco power shaft, we have 10 millimeter shafts, so able to hold uh, much better torque and be able to deal with some higher viscosities with this standard shaft. As you can also see on the flux design, we don't have any pin connection. We have this nice large thread, which goes directly into the drive end of the pump. Here we see the notch also where the seal was, and this just gives you a much more heavy duty design as we can see here when compared to the Lutz version. Okay, last section of the video here, we'll just take one more rundown of the two pumps side by side. Uh, we looked at all the individual components already, but now just to touch on uh, some things that set these units apart and their characteristics. For one, the Lutz pump uses about 14 wear items or 14 components to build up the pump. So uh, this is going to be many small items. We saw the pin, the seal comes in components. Here on the Visco power design, we only have four, uh, 10 pieces, which would put together the entire pump, right? So this is less items to stock purchase, maintain, etc. over the lifetime of your pump. Lutz mechanical seals, right? We saw the spring is exposed. This is considered an open mechanical seal, so an area that might be tough to clean or also where particulate can build up over time. On the low flow version, you can get a mechanical seal good to 10 bar, right around 145 PSI. The higher flow version of the Lutz, this would be the 50.1 design, actually only offers a discharge pressure of 8 bar, which is around 116 PSI. The Flux Visco power designs using a closed mechanical seal. This is much better for sanitary applications as well as maintenance and replacement of the seal. Uh, also, what that closed mechanical seal gets you is a pressure rating of 15 bar, 217 PSI, so significantly above that of the Lutz design. Elastomers available in the pumps. Lutz will come with FPM or EPDM elastomers. On the Visco power design, we have FKM and FFKM options, so being able to cover a very wide range of chemicals. For the stator materials at the bottom of the pump, 
The LUTs design is going to come with PTFE or an EPDM option. That would be for FDA, for 3A sanitary, only Teflon. Looking at the Visco power design, we have Teflon, right? That's going to work for both food as well as 3A. And then for the food version, we also have an NBR white stator, which is food grade and good for anything which might be abrasive. Pump shafts, right? Keeping in mind, Lutz is using the pin design up top, right? So another small component to keep track of. Uh, you also have to make sure that that um, sleeve or the ring is around that pin to keep it from coming out during operation. As we saw on the Visco power design, our shaft is threading into the drive side of the pump, so we're able to convert a lot more power from the drive end. And also the shaft diameters, only about eight millimeters on the Lutz pump where we're looking at 10 millimeters on the flux design, so about 25% larger. Stator housing on the Visco power design is removable, so, so anything down here gets damaged, this gets dropped, right? You can replace just this component. Here we see on the LUTs design, this is an entire one-piece tube, so if anything gets pinched or damaged down here at the bottom, it would require a replacement of the entire pump tube. Also looking at the pump tubes, two-inch tri-clamp discharge ports on both the Flux and the LUTs design. But what we have on the Flux version is a true two-inch, even where it meets the pump tube, whereas on the LUTs design, this gets necked down to about an inch and a half where it is welded to the pump outer tube. Special tools, none required for the Visco Flux design. Um, we showed the staking tool or any type of Allen wrench or screwdriver which goes in to keep the drive shaft steady, right? so no need for anything special. And then also on the 3A design, we only need one 24 millimeter metric wrench in order to um, take the drive shaft off, right, from the pump shaft. There is a special tool that does come with the LUTs design. This is a plastic tool to remove the retaining ring at the bottom. Uh, of course, being plastic, this could easily break, um, get lost or anything like that. So not needing any special tools, another nice feature of the Visco power. Temperature ranges, LUT states their pump is good to 100 degrees C or 200 degrees, uh, 212 degrees Fahrenheit. The Visco power design is good to 120 degrees C or 248 degrees Fahrenheit. So we can also handle greater temperatures with the Visco flux design. Both pumps uh, come in a speed reduced version, which we see here with the gear boxes. As we can see, the LUTs design has a white epoxy coated gearbox. The Flux Visco Power coming with a stainless steel gearbox. And also on those, these pumps would be rated, uh, LUTs rates their pump to about 30,000 centipoise. Uh, you'll see some Flux literature where it's also rated to 30,000, but our experience tells us over the course of 40 years of selling these pumps to the market that we can actually handle viscosities of 40, 45, and even 50,000 centipoise with a gear reduced version. So do discuss that with your Flux expert if you have any of those applications. That's about all the differences between the two pumps. Please do take a look at the other videos that we have. We'll have them linked in the uh, description of this video. We have disassembly videos of our 570 and 580 Visco power pumps with the two types of seals, as well as a complete overview of the entire Visco Flux family. And uh, two other videos that we also have out there, for those familiar, we had the Flux F550 and F560. Those are the old progressive cavity style pump designs. We do also have some videos where we compare the Visco power to our own old designs as well to showcase the features. If there's anything we can help you with, please give us a call. Thanks for tuning in and we look forward to seeing you next time.